going to record on the computer. Okay, I think I did it. Okay, so let me just set this up over here. Oh, we already have people waving at me. Is it you guys? <laughs> Last time, the teaching artists that we were talking to were waving while I was doing this. And I was like, oh, <laughs> hello. Who do I, where do I wave? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Um, okay, so hi everybody. Um, welcome to our week two of interview slash conversation with the Fresh Theater Arts Teaching Artists. Um, and what I'd like to do is go around the boxes, even though I'm so aware of the fact that everybody's box is in a different place. Um, so feel free to chime in when you want. But what I'd love for you to do is I'd love for you to just say your name. Um, and say what discipline of performing arts you teach, um, and then we'll get deeper into the conversation. So who wants to go first? <laughs> Great! Hi, I'm Fola, Fola Walker, and I primarily teach dance, even though I can teach other facets, but dance is my avenue. Awesome. Hi, Fola. <laughs> Uh-oh, silence. <laughs> uh -oh. Zoom. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> I'm Lisa Gunn Becker, and I teach in a lot of different areas. I would say theater is my strong area, but I also do musical theater. With fresh theater arts, I've been able to teach drama to special needs populations. I um, also do a little ballroom dance, so I uh, do whatever you, you like me to do. <laughs> That's why I like you. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Georgie Smith, and I primarily teach musical theater. Um, I've done a lot of choreography for Fresh Theater Arts. That's, That's me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Georgie. Hi. Give me one second, Jess. Hold on one second because I'm getting a, I can't hear anything. Can you all hear them now? Can you hear them now? <laughs> Not working. Oh. oh no. Why would that be? My luck, right? Your Zoom settings? Well, it's not on Zoom. It's on Instagram. So let's try this again. Can you hear them? Can I get a wave if we hear everybody? Fabi, you hear them? Kira, you hear them? Yes, I have yeses. Okay, let's keep going. Who's next? Woohoo, it is me. Hi, everyone. I am Jessica Stanzik, and I primarily teach music. Awesome. Thank you, Jess. So I just want to make sure. Okay, so um, thank you everybody for being here and for taking time out of your busy teaching schedules, especially um, to I'm getting messages about people hearing at the same time. So are we fixed, everybody? I just want to make sure that we're fixed as I keep going. Yes. Great. Awesome. Amazing. Terrific. Okay. Um, so taking time out of your busy schedules to be here, I really appreciate it. Thank you for also um, indulging me with all the technical issues because I am learning as we go. Um, and so I wanted to start this conversation by, um, again, going around the boxes and you telling me a little bit about what your story is and if we could keep it to like five minutes so that we give everybody a chance to talk. Um, you know, what was your major? How did you decide that you wanted to major in that? But like beyond that also, um, you know, where are you currently teaching? Because I know as teaching artists, we teach for a lot of different places. Um, and yeah, let's start there and, and see what happens. So let's go, can we go in the same order that we went in before? Fola, do you feel comfortable starting? Sure. Great, thanks. Um, Sorry, I don't know if you noticed, but I was chasing my cats around. We have to keep them separate. I'm like, going. <laughs> like what I open the door and they both go out, and I like had to go outside. Um, I thought you were looking for the best background, Fola. No, I was like, oh no, both of my cats are on the balcony. <laughs> um, but yeah, so mine is interesting, I guess. Actually, I guess it's not that interesting. I've been dancing since I was like one and a half. And my mom is like the type of person who put me in every single thing that she could ever put me in just to see what I gravitated towards also because she worked a lot. So she was like, all right, you go over here. 
and I chose dancing and I've been dancing since I was one and a half, all kinds of different dance, gymnastics, tap, musical theater, um, <laughs> I mean, jazz, ballet, everything, literally everything. Um, and I started teaching when I was 14, which is uh, like really weird to like, because people are like, what, that's crazy. And I'm like, it is crazy. Like, I don't think I should have been teaching when I was 14, <laughs> but uh, especially teaching people who are older than me. But I was going to the studio and I was on their competition team and I was there five days a week. And then I would go on my, ex so like I was there Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sat uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I would take the older kids classes on Wednesday because I was like a teen at the time, which our levels were like, all the, if, until you're up to 13, that's when like you're a teen. And then when you're 14 or 15, when you get into high school, that's when you're considered a senior. So I was taking the seniors classes when I was a teen and then a teacher dropped out on Wednesday and they were like, hey, Fola, you can teach hip hop, right? And I was like, well, I've only been taking it for two years. You can teach hip hop, right? So I ended up teaching hip hop. And I mean, I, honestly, I think that it really, really helped me to, to see that like I wasn't just somebody who could follow directions well, you know? If that makes any sense, at 14, yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'm good at explaining things to people. Mm -hmm. I'm good at, at making people feel comfortable even when they don't feel comfortable. Like I'm good at little things like that. Um, so I think that's what sparked it for me. And then once again, I've always done dance. So like when I went to school, it was a no brainer. I was like, I can't do anything other than, well, not that I can't do anything other than dance, but I'm hard headed and I'm stubborn. So like, uh, I was like dance. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. English. What do you mean? You want me to major in English? Why? I, I can do dance and do English. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I majored in dance. I went to Rutgers as well. I did the dance team. Um, a big story about like, you know, just, I don't know. Uh, You're great. Know. You're great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't want to delve too much into that, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> dance team and dance majors are very different. Uh, anyway, um, so I've always been teaching. Yeah, I started teaching when I was 14, so I've always been teaching. Even when I was college, it was in college, I was teaching. Um, after that, it was more of like, well, how do I consider myself an adult? <laughs> how do I make consecutive money and, you know, consistent money? Um, but I never stopped teaching. And then I think when I was like 23, I, well, actually lies. When I was 19, I, oh, Jesus Christ. I, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't five minutes. All right. So, <laughs> You're over it, Cola. <laughs> I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. So when I was 19, I started stage managing. And I think that that was a good thing for dance competitions. And then when I was 23, I started getting jobs. And I met Tova as well when I was 23. I started getting yeah. jobs to be like a full-time teacher at dance studios. And yeah, it's been uphill since then um <laughs> but i really don't i'm one of those people where they say like if you can't do anything or if you can do something else you should do something else and i am like i would i don't know if i would make it like i i know i'm smart enough to do anything that i want but like does anything give me the satisfaction no not like dance. not like that i have a feeling that that's going to end up being the theme amongst, you know, <laughs> amongst uh, a lot of the conversation. So thank you. that I went first. You're good, Fola. Thanks for sharing, Fola. <laughs> okay, Lisa. <laughs> um, I, I would agree with that. I was told if you can't do anything, you know, if you can do something else, do it. I didn't do anything else. Uh, and I just have to chime in. I have two daughters at Rutgers now, sorry. So those are my comments. Uh, <laughs> I was the kid whose dad took her to children's theater, community theater, and I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. And, I, you know, it's funny to hear you all talking because I now remember that before I wanted to do theater, I wanted to be a ballerina. Ah. Um, I do not have the physical makeup 
to be, I'm a curvy person and I don't have archy feet. So um, then I segued into jazz. I, again, I'm just remembering this all, uh, the jazz company. And I got into uh, theater and musical theater in high school with an incredible teacher who is a mentor to me still. Um, I went to undergraduate for theater and I wanted more training. So I went to graduate school in Philadelphia at Temple University. Um, got my MFA and then I was determined I, to be on Broadway and I pounded the pavement and I got a Broadway show and I was so happy. Um, I worked doing other things and uh, now I, I have two children and when you have children it's very hard to go out of town or do tours. Uh, so I have moved and take on more arts education work. Um, I direct, I te you know, teach others how to do sustainable musical theater, and I feel very blessed and lucky that I still get to sort of work in this lane, you know? So, that's me. Thank you. What, what Broadway show were you in, Lisa? I was in Annie, the 20th anniversary, with Nell Carter and then Sally Struthers. <laughs> so cool. Had to throw that in there. Okay, <laughs> next, Georgie. I think you're next. Thank you. Sarah. Hello. That's so cool. So so cool. Um, I so don't know I if guess you guys were born then, so I, I just needed to throw that out. But we'll say it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's awesome. <laughs> um, so my story. I started. So when I was very little, um, maybe like three, four, I would sing in my parents' car. Um, and I would know all the lyrics to theme songs and I would just belt them out in the car and I was really into it. And so I got up, I decided, I went to my aunt's wedding and I decided to get up and sing Hit Me Baby one more time at my, <laughs> at my aunt's wedding when I was around four years old. And my parents said, okay, I guess we have to try and get her voice lessons. So um, I found a voice teacher that was willing to work with me at five. And then all of a sudden, um, my mom's a hairdresser and she got, she was working with a client and um, her client was telling her about this friend of theirs that was in an off-Broadway show about kids. And um, they were having an open call and they were like, you should bring Georgie. You should bring Georgie and see what happens. We had no idea what we were doing. We were like, okay, why not? Didn't know what a headshot or resume or 16 <laughs> bar cut was, anything. Um, but I ended up booking it and I don't know, it happened. And I toured with that show. It was an off-Broadway touring show and I toured with that show until I was about eight or nine years old, <laughs> which was really fun. And it was just the um, tri-district area, I guess. So it was like New York, um, New Jersey, Pennsylvania and so I did that and started auditioning a lot as a child actor and then got through high school and when I was in high school I kind of had that bug to uh, teach and to direct and choreograph so I started doing that then and then I decided to go to school for acting so I went to Fairleigh Dickinson University and got my bachelor's degree in, in theater arts and with a concentration in acting and then from there, I started auditioning again <laughs> and keeping up with it. But it's a lot different than being a child actor as an adult, as you all probably know. Uh, so that was definitely interesting learning that transition. Um, and then from there, I continued to direct and choreograph while I was also doing acting projects. So. I was doing a show as an actor and then I'd be directing or then I'd be choreographing. Um, whatever job that I could get, I was, I've been trying to do. I not was, I have been. And um, then I toured, uh, also Jess, Jess and I toured with the same uh, company, Ar Arts Power National Touring Theater. So I toured with them for about a year and a half with two different original productions and that's what left me up to COVID. <laughs> and now I'm and now I'm here with FTA. I've been with 
FDA for I think a year, a year now. Yeah. Yep, and I work for some other um, organizations as well. And that's my story. That's where I'm at. <laughs> Thanks, Georgie. We're going to get to the moments past, like in, in the middle of COVID. <laughs> we'll move into those moments soon. Thank you for sharing. Jess, we still have people on, by the way. I'm just saying. I'm very Amazing. Hi, hi. Um, this is so nice just to hear where everyone comes from, everyone's background. Super, super cool. Um, so I, yeah, kind of like, uh, Georgie's start too. My parents always said that I was like singing before I was talking and I used to sit in my garage singing just around the river bend when I was like two. Um, and so when I was in first grade, I think I came home from school with a flyer for the Wizard of Oz. Wow. And we always say like the rest is history. Like that's it. I got the bug. Um, it was with a community theater called New Jersey Repertory Theater that's based in central Jersey and I did every single show that they ever put on basically from when i was in first grade through i'd say about junior year of high school um and then i switched over to directing and musical directing for them so that's kind of when i entered that world so i feel like i've always grown up doing theater and then somewhere kind of mid high school i discovered opera and that was a world that I lived in for a little while. So I actually went to school for opera. I went to Westminster Choir College in Princeton, New Jersey, and I got a Bachelor of Music in Voice Performance, and I loved it. It was, it was very focused on that world, which I really liked, because I felt like every single class that I took was like relevant to every aspect of what I was doing. So that was amazing. And then, so I graduated, I was kind of like, I really miss theater. Like I kept up with it a little bit while I was there, but it was so opera focused. And that career journey was just very different from the path of pursuing musical theater right out of college. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for musical theater right now and kind of see where it leads me. Um, and so after that, the first thing I booked was Snow White in the Snow White International Tour which kind of kicked off my like touring children's theater love. So then I worked with several children's theater, the same one that Georgie did with Arts Power, not at the same time, funnily enough. And then also with um, the growing stage that Georgie's done, also not at the same time, which is just <laughs> very funny. Um, but yeah, the most recent, so I did uh, a Christmas Carol at McCarter Theater which got me to be um, an EMC, an equity membership candidate. And I was like, woohoo, here comes spring. And then kind of COVID. But here we are. I actually, so I work as a music director with Bella Princess, which is a party princess company. They also have a musical theater camp. And so that kind of came from the girls who have kind of aged out of the princess stuff, but still really love the environment of it. And so this past summer, we were able to do an in-person camp with all of the procedures and safety stuff, which was kind of crazy, but we made it work. And it was just so nice to have that. And then this upcoming season for Annie and Descendants with FTA will actually be my first music director experience with this company. So I am pumped. And it'll be fun. I'll tell you that much. I'm so excited. <laughs> so yeah, that's, I suppose, that's my story. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So I, I want to jump into this COVID land that we're in, although I, I think that we're all pretty deep into it. We don't really think too far. Um, but, you know, I would love to hear from all of you about how your teaching practices and philosophies have kind of carried into this COVID land, right? Because I think, you know, something that's been interesting, it's been a challenge, but it's been a challenge that, that has been interesting and exciting almost um, in terms of how to retrain my brain to teach over a computer 
right? I mean, you guys know me and anybody that's on here probably knows me, but I'm like, a, hey, hug me. <laughs> you know, like I'm the in your face, like let's do it. Let's zip, zap, zap, which I would like to say Zoom, if you're listening, okay, would be really cool to play zip, zap, zap if all of our boxes were in the same place. Because like right now I'm in between Lisa and Jess. I could zip, right, if, if you were all in the same area, then we could really play an actual game. But I can't because everybody's faces are in a different spot. Yeah, right? Isn't, is isn't there going to be like an update or something where, I, I don't know where I saw this, but I heard that, yes. that there was going to be an update yeah. where you can like actually move the boxes to be in like the right, yes. the same order. When? I yes. heard that too. I when? that too. I don't know. <laughs> I, actually, I actually think it's happened. I think that you I can. Click on your face, Lisa. Let me see if I can move it. Nope, it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> I think it's an update. Like I think you have to update the app, but I haven't. I don't. I haven't done it yet, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Then, like, think about it, right? So, so these theater games that we play, like, think about. Okay, get into a circle. Right, you know, a lot of a lot of our, or at least a lot of my activities that I do are a lot of being able to see everybody and being able to take the temperature of the room and and go from there. The temperature of the room, everybody's in a different room, and a lot of people's rooms are muted, and a lot of people's rooms, the camera's off, right? So I I I, I here, what I'm trying to ask <laughs> is. You know, all of the skills that you've gained throughout your career as a teacher, you know, how are you, how are you able, what are you doing to take those skills and apply them into this new, you know, COVID world? And, and feel free, you don't have to necessarily answer that question. If you'd like to answer a question that sounds like that question, that's good too. Um, you know, but it's a hard one. It's a hard one, you know, it's a, so, you know, why not? Bola. <laughs> Um, so I feel like I've taken like the concept of inception to a whole new level where you're, you're like trying to ask questions to lead people places so that they can come up with their own, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Cause it like, usually when you're in a classroom setting, you can kind of guide everybody and lead everybody to the place that you're going to. <laughs> and then with this, it's more of like, well, no, I have to make sure that they are already, like, that they're definitely going to the place where I'm going to, because if they're not, then they can just wander away <laughs> or turn the camera off or anything. So it's, I've found that, like, you either have to engage with a lot of thought-provoking questions, not that we weren't doing that before, but specifically with dance, like, it's not always that, you know? <laughs> so with dance, like, I'm like, okay, I need to ask about, like, where they're feeling it and well, I mean it's more of just going in depth but at the same time it's also like engaging people you know not even just the questions it's like well I also have to disperse like am I getting their attention you know what I mean every 10 minutes it's like all right well let's do this to make sure that I have your attention run grab something and come back and bring it to me you know and then we'll do another thing <laughs> you know that's great that's great the, the camera on off thing I, I think has been difficult and when I started transitioning to the virtual landscape you know we were all in some form of trauma from this pandemic so I think that you had to be much more mindful of people's on and off with the camera but uh, I am finding now to have the buy-in is to maybe even create a community agreement, you know, saying, look, I really need your cameras on to engage. So what do you need to keep that on? Mm -hmm. um, and then I was in a training where the gentleman said, we're doing everything as if we were in person. So I need that engagement. And if we're, so we don't have a circle, so I'm going to establish the order. There's the order though now, and, and let's go. And it's somewhat exhausting. We were all having internet fatigue because I'm not able to, to pick up on your physical cues as easily as if we were in person. But those yeah. are some of the things that helped me. Great, those are great suggestions. This will, um, this will be my first time music directing over Zoom. So I'm appreciating all these little tidbit tips that I definitely wanna take with me. I am. Um, 
I also, since obviously we are in the arts, so we juggle many jobs, I'm also um, an online ELL teacher. And so I learned a lot about like this kind of engagement through the screen that I'm definitely going to be taking with me. I feel like it's a lot, at least a lot of what you were saying too, how we're in this weird time. So kind of needing to like adapt and knowing that we're all in, in kind of funky, unique places, I think really like, you know, boosting the support, boosting the morale. And like, we need this and they need this, you know, like this, sure it looks different, but like really as much community building as you can, that means maybe like, you know, more games, a little bit sillier than we'd already go. I think um, I like to do really silly warm ups with especially like younger kids just to like, you know, get them moving, get them comfortable, and they could be shy to do some of the crazy stuff. So I think we can kind of lean into the like, hey, like, you're on mute. No one can see you. You're in your own home. Like, just go crazy, go super far and above with it. And maybe having that, you know, like, okay, I'm private and I'm with people. I'm hoping really leaning into that, like, double energy will help to create that kind of connection. It's so interesting what you said about, and then Georgie, I'm going to let you answer the question. It's so interesting about what you said about they need it and we need it, right? Like how many of us have found ourselves at this point, you know, throughout this pandemic going, A, well, maybe I'm unemployed, right? <laughs> or B, like, you know, oh, this scares me, this world, right? Because I'm used to doing this a certain way. How do I now do this a different way? You know, and I think what's been so um, positive throughout this is the fact that we can connect to each other. Like I'm going to a wedding and I'm going to a birthday party and I'm going to, what was, I'm going to Sweet 16 on Sunday all at the same time, you know, because I'm with, all three things are going to be on, on a computer in my house at the same time. And I'm going to walk to the different rooms to go. Now these are things I probably would have never been invited to. <laughs> You know, if I had to travel to Florida or I had to travel to New York City or I had to, you know, so, so I love what you're saying and we're hearing it from all of you about like building community and about the fact that like we as artists, we need our students as much as our students need us right now. You know, so that's, that's really great. Sorry, I jumped on you, Georgie. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's definitely part of what I was going to go into. Um, you know, like, actually, throughout all of this, I was having a little bit of um, internet connection loss. So it was like going in and out. I heard everybody, but every once in a while, I'd freeze. And it's funny, because that happens. That's just, you have to adapt, adapt to the screen and and what's happening and and I think one thing that I try to tell my students is like that's okay like there's you know I want I want them to try their hardest and try their best while they're over the camera but also you're not going to see everything in your eyes in the most perfect way you know everything's not going to be perfect internet lags and and um people have connection issues and everybody's in different places. And sometimes you're dealing with so many people on Zoom at once and it, it, like, that's okay. That's okay. I think just making sure that the students know that, you know, there is no pressure to be perfect. What we want is we want you to have fun. We want you to learn. We want you to enjoy your time because like what Jess says, I said like before, um, you know, this is, I think it was Jess, maybe Lisa, it, you know, we want it just as much as they do, you know? Um, so I think that's really important. But with that, there's some amazing things that we get to do online now. It's like, it's so cool. I can just change my background and, and be in a whole nother world and establish this whole nother world with all of these kids. That's amazing. And um, the fact that we can, learn different techniques like acting over a camera and being able to talk to people and try to react based off of their reactions over a camera like it's a whole way of different way of thinking and different way of viewing the world and it's so interesting and while there's 
some negatives to not being in person. There's also a lot of interesting positives and a lot of great things that we've all been able to learn through this experience. Like editing, right, Fola? <laughs> We know how to edit now. I didn't know how to edit before any of this. Did you know how to edit everybody? Did you know how to edit things before any of this happened? Nope, never had to edit nothing in my life. Nope. Hey, nope. how about self-submit? I don't know if anybody does commercial stuff. That's the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. I can make mistakes. I can look at what I'm doing and then I send it and I'm not driving into New York City. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. It's so cool. And you can have a couple takes and send in a couple takes and you can and literally do it as many times as you want. Exactly. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So cool. And I wonder, you know, I had a principal say to me recently that, um, you know, that this is very challenging for everybody, right? Especially for classroom teachers, I would say, yeah. but you know, for us as teaching artists as well, this is, it's challenging. You're dealing with, people that are dealing with their own personal stresses while you're trying to provide some sort of comic relief as you're going around because, you know, we all want to laugh. But something that he said to me was that, you know, we have an opportunity here to take these new things that we're learning and to apply them post pandemic, mm -hmm. right? That there are things that we're going to learn that we maybe never would have, I never would have taken the time to sit down at a computer and learn how to edit before. In all honesty, I never would have done, I'm busy, I'm an in-person person, I got other stuff going on, right? But now I have another skill that I can lean on or like, think about it, in terms of being able to submit to like Broadway or to any sort of audition where you're trying to like dance for the NBA or you're trying whatever it is. Being able to do that in your home and then send a video saves you money on gas. <laughs> you know, money on coffee or whatever you need in order to get through, you know, but I hope that those things stick, right? You know, I hope that as artists, we continue to be, you know, to have compassion to our students and, and what they're going through post all of this, because this is a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal what's happening. Um, but yeah, I hope that a lot of that sticks. I thought that that was good advice. It's like, okay, I'm gonna clock that. <laughs> Um, okay, so we have a question from one of our students. I wonder if she's still here because she's waiting for me to ask her the question. Um, so this is from a student. Her name is Javi. I think some of you know her. So her question was, how did you know that theater or dance or music was your passion? And what made you say no to the people who doubted you that you could do it? Are you there, Javi? <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to answer that one. All right, who's next? <laughs> I just loved it. I mean, I loved it. I loved it like like nothing else. And I don't know if it's the invincibility of youth, but the <laughs> doubters, the doubters, they didn't know what they were talking about because like I was gonna do it and I loved it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. sounds so familiar. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Because, like, even now, like, uh, there is a lot of people who are, I mean, me included. I'm like, well, can I do this job and, and get, like, benefits and get, like, you know, get all this stuff? Can I, can I just do that now uh, while I also try and figure out and wade through the waters of, like, keeping my professional career in dance? Uh, I'm trying those things out. But at the end of the day, I'm – even with all of this stuff and feeling like I'm less important than all of the regular quote unquote regular jobs that people have, I still feel like if I hadn't gone for something that I absolutely love and adored, I would never be satisfied. I would never be happy completely because I would always be thinking like, well, I could have done this. I could have tried this. I could have went for it my life could be different or it could i could have more money because that's i mean honestly that's what my mom when my mom was like you can be a nurse and i was like i hate blood you can be a nurse and make a good amount of money i'm like i i i, I can't like <laughs> i i'm sure i could at the end of the day i'm sure i could push all of that aside and do something that i know would keep me uh, within the good graces, I feel like it's a good graces of um, society, 
and do what people deem as a real job, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't fulfill me. I don't think that I would be happy. I don't think that money is the end all be all. I don't like, there are so many other factors to, to gauge. And I also have to realize that my privilege is like the fact that I didn't have to, you know what I mean? Like I could step out of, outside of my box and say, well, if I fail, then I'm not going to uh, completely fail. I still have my mom, you know, I'm, st I still have somebody and something to lean on. So I'll say that, like, I, it completely makes sense when people are like, well, why should I take the leap? You know, if you have the circumstance and you have the passion, then do it. I would say most people change their careers multiple times in their lives. All right. Do it. <laughs> Do it well, and uh, then... The arts is a real job though. Come on, come on. The arts is a real job. Thumbs up to that. <laughs> you That's don't have to convince us either. I know what you're saying though. I know <laughs> what you're saying, but. Yeah, you're, you're amongst friends here. <laughs> we're, all, we're all on that boat. <laughs> it might not be the easy job that has a paycheck that comes in every Thursday. But... <laughs> Early direct deposit day. Uh-huh. I just learned how to use Venmo. Nice. <laughs> That's my direct deposit. <laughs> Venmo. Direct deposit that any other day. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I always talk too much. So I'm just no, you're awesome. It's great. Keep going. Who's next? <laughs> you're great. That's for Georgie. Oh, hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I would, I want to say that, you know, if you have a passion for it and if it's something that you literally can't do, like, I, I feel like I can't do anything else. There was never a question in my brain that was like, oh, this is, I'm going to do something else. It was just like, no, this is just what I'm going to do. Um, and you figure out a way to make it work. I feel like that's the thing. You just, you just always, you always figure it out. You always like, if you don't have jobs lining up, then you make your own jobs and then you figure it out as you go. I mean, there's survival jobs too, you know, <laughs> people, people, waitress, people, you, you know, you, you do, you do other jobs so that you can continue to create. I substitute teach at, like at an elementary school, but that's also a part of what I love. Like that's something that I love to do as well. It's just, I don't, I don't think I can see myself teaching in an elementary school all the time. I, I love to create, but um, so I feel like as long as you're pushing yourself and you're always, I don't want to say persevere because it, you don't, I feel like it's more of a passion. As long as you have that passion inside you, you'll make it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you'll learn grit and tenacity yeah. <laughs> and all of those life skills that are so valuable. Especially if there's a pandemic. Oh, you get through this, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Jess? This one. Oh, wait. Oh, this is a good question. Oh, I good. feel like a huge part of this. Am I frozen? You're back. there. Okay. Okay. I feel like a big part of an ant, like, I feel like I can't put words as to why it's my passion. I think that's kind of the point, you know, like it's, it's not a logical thing. Like I can't be like, this is my passion because X, Y, Z. Cause it's that like that indescribable feeling like that. Well, I feel nothing else like this in any other aspect of my life. So like, I want to feel this forever. You know, it's, it's kind of like, that if this is what makes you happy, like, how could you not go for it? And there's, um, there's some quote or something someone prolific once said about how there's going to be so many voices that are going to doubt you and like, don't be one of them. Like, don't be one of those voices. And I think the way to like, you know, survive the doubters or get around that is like, not to put that on yourself too, because they're gonna, they're gonna be there, you know, and there's, a million people to doubt you, but there's also a whole community to support you. And so if you can lean into that and lean into like your love for it, then I feel like that'll carry you through all of the hard times and that'll carry you through like the craziness that is pursuing 
a job like this. That's great. That's great. And I, I think also like, just like what you're saying, and, and this is something that you have all probably or hopefully had a teacher say to you at some point, right? That you have to believe in yourself, right? That it starts with you. It starts with your passion. And, you know, a lot of time I get questions from kids like, my dad doesn't support me. I want to major in theater. My mom doesn't support me. What do I do? It's like, okay, well, go for it, you know, because as long as you believe in yourself, you know, try it, see what happens. If you fail and it ends up not being the right thing to do, there are a lot of different areas of the performing arts now that you can find a career in. So even if you're not going to go be on Broadway, or maybe you are, you know, like take this, for example, like there are so many Broadway artists or even us, right, where they are teaching classes and taking classes that they never would have been able to do before because they were either locked into contracts or their schedules were too busy or whatnot. Like there's always this silver lining. You just, it takes a little time to figure it out. Um, you know, but full, I love what you said about just recognizing the privilege of what well, dropped it of like having the support of your family, right? And of the people that are with you. I do think that makes a really I big take you back off of that. Yeah. Anybody who is under 18 years old, I don't know who is listening to this or who will see this. Just Tommy. Take everything that you can when your parents are saying, Hey, do you want to go to a, you want to do this? You want to do that? Maybe I'll put you in theater. Do it. Yes. Just say yes. <laughs> say yes. Because as soon as like you end up having to pay for all of your own things, everything gets more complicated. Delve as much as you can into everything that you can when you are a kid and people want to nourish you. All right. <laughs> and then when you get to that age, it's like, well, this is the, the thing that I love the most. And then just go for that. But like, take advantage. <laughs> take advantage. Yeah. All right. And Jordy, like we've been saying this we've been saying this a lot also right like we've said this to our students at least in our camp like take as many classes as you possibly can you have access now to artists that you never would have had access to before exactly right? you yeah. you can meet so many people right now <laughs> do it why not why wouldn't you do it like just take those classes do it do, do the homework Right yeah. now, while, while you have the time and, and you can learn something new, why not? Why, why wouldn't you take advantage of it? I don't know. Somebody that I work with said, uh, so that in, in this time, you know, we were all fishermen before the pandemic. So we can't go out and fish now, but we can mend and strengthen our nets. And I thought that was good. So get your butts to class. Like you said, take these classes. Yeah. Experience new art forms awesome it's awesome so and, and take a risk too take yeah. a risk because i know that it, that can feel at least for me even taking a class can feel kind of risky or like i get nervous over like maybe the fear of doing that but just do it take take the risk of doing it totally so i know that we are we're like at nine o'clock i just I, if it's okay with everybody i've got like one more question and you can so we're going to be brief on it. So this is what we'll leave with. So, and I know we kind of touched upon like the advice of that we're, I dropped the phone. <laughs> okay. 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 Man, oh man, oh man. Last time I did this, my kids walked in. What are you doing, mommy? Who's that? Is that my new teacher? <laughs> No, my teacher. No. Oh, look, it's Fola. <laughs> I've logged on to watch you drop the phone because it's delayed and it was in. It satisfied me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you know, we we. Uh, that's why I like you guys. We um. We kind of touched upon this in terms of like take your classes and and take advantage of this time and stuff. But like, we want to leave our students with like one key piece of advice right? Or maybe something that you had heard, like Lisa, you told us something that you had heard. Um, what would you share with your students right now? Um, you know, it can relate to the fact that we're in this universe and this box universe, or like there's one thing that you always wanted to say to your students, like, don't touch me. Like I always wanted yeah. to, <laughs> you know, but does that make sense? <laughs> so Let's, let's get one piece of advice. Everybody's got a minute to say what it is, and then we'll wrap up. Let's go first. 
Yeah. I can jump in and I'm, I'll, how about I, how about I get our order crazy? I'm going to jump in. Great. This, this is, this is what I'm going to say. And that is no matter what you do, if you're going into theater or whatnot, I feel that everybody, all the young, the young people doing the classes and whatnot, you must remember there is no one else like you. You are the best you. So you're doing all these things. You're doing all these classes. Please don't compete against other people. Uh, get inspired from other people. Get better. Compete against yourself and be the best you because you're probably pretty fabulous. That was my advice. Uh -oh. <laughs> you can say it too. You know, I'm just gonna piggyback off of you. Yeah. I I totally I that is like the best advice I think I've ever received too. Yep. Like as a young kid. Um, but a very quick story, one minute because I have the same advice. So when I was a kid, I I went into an audition and it was all these kids and it was for a big show and this this casting assistant came out and she was like, you know, you, great job, everybody. I know this is difficult to be a kid actor, but like, if you decide, like you could always be like me when you grow up. And I got really upset in that moment because I was like, wait, I, I want to perform. I want to do this for my life. But then also that affected me growing up because then I thought, no, I want to be who I am and I'm going to make my own journey and I'm going to be myself. And that is like the best learning lesson is just to own who you are because you are unlike anybody else in this world. I love it. Snaps again. Um, so I guess I'm going next. Do it. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I want to piggyback off of what you said, Tova, is people um people tend to be like well i'm gonna go for this art form in college because i want to be a star and and that's with a lot of art forms <laughs> i want to be the, the the creme de la creme i want to be a star i want to be famous i want to be on everybody's television screens and i think people really are discouraged from going for their art forms if they if whoever it is that they're trying to appease themselves with don't think that they can be a star no go for it if you want to if you want to pursue acting you never know you may go for acting and then become a director you know you may go for it and then become a writer and you you end up creating your own realm and your own your own avenue like you know what i mean like go for what your heart is telling you to go for and it will never lead you astray. Like no matter if you have to like swerve and, and, and take different routes, it's still a part of your journey and it's never going to be uh, like worthless. It's never going to be a waste of your time. It may lead you to where you need to be. Great. Yay. This is great advice. I'm so glad I'm recording it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wow, this has been great. I feel like I should have been taking notes. Um, Lisa and Georgie, I was going to say something very um, similar that I couldn't have said nearly as eloquently as you guys did. It was beautiful. Um, so I'll go in a slightly different, I feel like it all kind of ends up being in the same realm. But when I was growing up as a kid, I feel like I, I knew I wanted it, but I was almost afraid to admit that this was something I wanted so bad, you know, having it be a career that you never know where it's going to end up, which is, you know, a joy and a scary thing about it. So I like if I could have gone back to me as a child, I would have been like, just don't be afraid to admit that this is what you want. Like, don't be afraid to go for it. Like, take those shots. Let the world know that, like, you're here and you're going for it. And like you're you're on your journey, like your journey is your own. No one else is going to sing your song do your journey like it's all you so if you don't go for it like it'll never happen no one will take it you know like you you just gotta launch all in if this is what you really want and just go that's great that's great i love you guys this was awesome and such great advice thank you for sharing your stories thank you for sharing your advice with with our, we had followers, people. I don't even know what that means. Are they my friends? Like, is that how it works? The followers are my friends. Now I don't know who they yeah, are. The followers are, are your friends on Facebook. 
Facebook, bro. I don't know. Hi, we love you. Oh, who are you? Okay, good. Um, so thank you. Does anybody have anything else that they want to say really quick or we're I know, that's like a big there's so much I feel like I feel like we're just getting started like I was like I got a couple more but yeah no we're, we're I know, I know, I know. but yeah so thank you everybody for being here with me on zoom thank you to everybody on Instagram who followed us if you're interested in learning more about the Fresh Theater Arts teaching artists you can go to the Fresh Theater Arts website which is www.freshtheaterarts.com and um, you're going to see pretty much everybody doing some work from some Fresh Theater Arts work over the next couple of months, which is really exciting, whether it's in the classroom, outside the classroom, or virtual, I think it's pretty much all virtual. Um, and yeah, I wish you all the most of luck and let's keep in touch. And on Thursday, we've got one more round of teaching artists. It's like I'm looking here, but I'm looking there. One more round of teaching artists, uh, interviews, conversations. And thanks, guys. You're the best. Thanks for sharing your time with me. Thank nice you. meeting you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Nice yeah. meeting you. Be on the dance floor or getting music directed or, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Stay safe. I'll speak to you yeah. soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.